several themes that we look at in the story. Uh, one being, how do you live in a world of systems and be free? Um, all is vanity. And this is taken straight from Ecclesiastes of uh, King Solomon's journey. Well, I wrote the script for the film, Dead Cat Bounce. And I also play the lead character, Atlas Cooper, who's a stockbroker. It's uh, sort of caught up in the system and a victim of insatiable greed, I suppose. Another great joy of being a filmmaker is the process. Have a project that they love and they're passionate about, going through it and actually creating it. Well, the idea kind of came from a couple of different places. I wanted to do a stock market story for a while. I didn't really have the right characters to make it work. And so I put it off and then uh, the things going on in the market today, we're seeing all these companies go out of business and indexes falling very quickly, some people not handling it well, most people not handling it well, and I felt like the time was ripe. This was a fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants production. I play a character named Jackson Rudd. Um, he's kind of the quintessential all-American guy. He's married and has a kid, and uh, my character and Atlas are friends, and uh, they kind of choose a road that's uh, very self-destructive. So we live like kings and lose it all. <laughs> <laughs> to invincibility. Invincibility. Dead cat bounce is a stock term used by brokers to describe a temporary rise in a stock price followed by a bigger fall. So it sort of is a fake out. It makes you think that the downturn is over and that you're coming back up now only to find out that you're actually gonna fall even farther. Think about your life, Jackson. You really want to work another 35 years for a gold watch, retirement benefits that pay less than half of what you take home now? For the characters, the way this is sort of a metaphor in their lives is that their lives are headed sort of at a trickle downward. They come up, I don't want to give too much away, but they uncover this sort of little secret that helps them rise to riches very quickly, sort of spike upward in their lives, only to find that it's going to be followed by an even farther uh, descent. You read the Times. I play Mr. Ryan, and he is involved in an organization that basically controls uh, what the stock market does. Do you realize what would happen if the technocrats and the oil barons could go as far as they could go? They'd sell us and themselves if they thought they could get a boost on the stock prices. Insatiable greed. Uh, I play Amsterdam. He is the main henchman for Mr. Ryan. Amsterdam is his right-hand man. We're surveilling Atlas to see if he is uh, ready or worthy uh, to join this elite group of people who control everything, control the market, control the country. It's the Fed. Leaning on the trade board, the market makers to manipulate the system. They're just window dressing. Employees like you, me, the president. You have to have a strong vision for the film, and with that, that dictates on how I work with the actors. My my process working with the actors is, uh, you know, I treat the script as a blueprint. And action, Josh! Ring, ring, ring! And I would sit down with the actors and and go through their character, go through their motivation, go through their objective of each scene. You know, that's, it's a collaborative art form, I think, and to be able to collaborate with the actors and have them spit, spitball ideas back at me, and uh, I think we, we all had a good embrace on, uh, on the main objective of the film. I enjoy working with directors um, that give, give, uh, give you freedom as an actor. He's a very actor-friendly director, and I've worked with other directors that specifically about this line, say at this point, but he kind of lets you live within uh, within the being and within the lines, within the moment. And uh, that's what I really enjoy about Derek, and he shoots extremely fast, which is always fun as an actor. I've supported you. You've had the same job, the same salary, the same benefits for five years. It's not progress, Jackson. I play uh, Gina Rudd, and that is Jackson's wife. And she is a character who um, loves her husband. She's just um, trying to um, basically make him see everything that he's pursuing is really destructive, um, both to himself and to us and the baby. So um, it's really just kind of her struggle to kind of get her husband kind of back. Half the country got foreclosed on last year. How are you? I've cut my losses on the whole nuclear family. But if you really want to get Gina back, just double your sales rate. 
mail your pay stuff. She'll be back sucking you dry in no time. Alice Cooper is um, kind of an enigma, I suppose. On one level, he is this sort of shark businessman that sort of wants the dollar. He's going after money at all costs. It seems to be that uh, he wants power, he wants freedom, he wants the ability to do things. He sort of wants the same things that every human being wants, but he goes about them, goes about getting what he wants in kind of a sort of a ruthless, unapologetic way. Atlas is all about control and power. You know, he does care about the money, but to him, it's about being in control. And, uh, you know, he sees he sees himself as invincible. The way that he, he brought this sinister tone to Atlas, um, you know, it, he's the kind of character you watch and you, you, you hate him, but you also like him at the end. And that's uh, that takes a lot to do as an actor. I thought he brought a lot to the table. You need a friend? Sorry, I, I'm married. Married. I won't tell. Come on. I live in a world of systems and be free. And you look at Jackson, he is a slave to I have to have the perfect job, I have to have the perfect house, the perfect wife, the perfect family, and if I don't have that, I can't be happy. And you kind of watch how that controls Jackson. I'd like to think of her as the rook in a game of chess. So she's very manipulative and she'll pretty much do whatever it takes to draw her opponents in and, um, you know, get what she wants, like a game of chess. Deanna, to me, symbolizes that taste of freedom, and that was one of the motivations of putting glasses on Jackson. You know, that's the cage that he's living in. That's the cage that he's trapped behind him, so. And when she removes his glasses, you know, she's trying to give him a taste of freedom. And, uh, you know, those are some of the small, small moments where we tried to hint at the theme of, uh, you know, being a slave to the system, a slave to this ideal. Derek and I have been working together as filmmakers since we were in high school. And it's been uh, really interesting to see uh, the path we've taken to get to Dead Cat Bounce. 21 Apple, take two, marker. We, we kind of joke that we're like an old married couple on set, and uh, you know we can read each other by just an eye look. And uh, you know we have a really good work relationship. Uh, we spent hours upon hours breaking down each scene and each each objective and motivation in each scene, and that really affected on how we uh, approached it visually. Our approach was to subtly complement each scene uh, with the use of color. One location that we spent a lot of time on specifically was the office scene. And we decided that each office scene should have a different look. If you notice, the office is constantly changing colors and we change the colors and it's motivated by the tone of the characters. I guess my hope is that audiences will, number one, be entertained and on the edge of their seat. And uh, it'd be good It'd be good for me if a few people walked, took away from it uh, maybe a warning about the danger of just living for the accumulation of money and wealth. And you, you just can't let your life be all about that. It truly is a great cast, a great crew, a great story, a great concept. I, I really think we got something here and, and I'm hoping for the best and uh, I just enjoyed my time with everybody and I hope to do it again. That's what makes it all. It's not a job. This is just something really really fun can't wait to see what the uh, the uh, final picture is going to look like when people walk away from this film i hope that they're entertained i hope that we put them on the edge of their seat and gave them thrills and and laughs and something exciting to walk away from but uh, most importantly i really hope that the theme of the film comes across and i hope people are able to maybe look at their lives and say you know what i'm living a greedy life this this lifestyle that the that these two characters lived it's it's quite dangerous and you know we took it because a lot of people just are, are all about the vanity um, and the materialism of this world, and that's something that we tried to point out. And, uh, you know, if a few people are able to look at themselves or prevent themselves from living a life of uh, foolish vanity, uh, that's, that's what, you know, we as the artists hope we accomplish.